Hey there, I'm Hillary Johnson, the founder and CEO of Hatch Tribe. Now, this tutorial is how to use the financial annual projection worksheet, and I'm going to walk you through the whole thing. But let me first say, knowing your numbers is a really important part of running a successful, sustainable, long lasting business. You have to know how money moves in and out of your business so that you can be profitable, number one, and you can really make educated and informed decisions for your business. Typically speaking, when I work with a business owner and they tell me they're, they're not sure of what to do, they're lacking some clarity, oftentimes it stems from the fact that they do not understand their numbers. They do not understand the finances of their business. And so if they're trying to make a decision about, say, hiring someone or investing in a marketing effort, or paying for something that frankly feels expensive, it's often because they just don't understand, quote unquote, how the sausage is made in their business. So this exercise allows you to do exactly that. And this is something that you typically will do at the beginning of a year. So it's for that calendar year, or you can also complete it at the end of a calendar year for the following year. That said, even if you're watching this right now, and it's like the middle of the year and you're going, oh my God, does that mean I should wait? No, just do it now. Like practice some um, grace for yourself. Just do it whenever you're looking at this video, whenever you're looking at the file. Okay, so with that said, let me talk you through what we have here in the file and then we're going to look at the examples. So there's gonna be six tabs at the bottom and each of these, um, the first three are the blank files. We're gonna come back to these. So there are three of these, but we're gonna work on the example tabs because these are here for you to see and to have a sense of how to build your own, um, just in case you get lost. So this first one is an example of revenue projection. Now, I wanna just remind you, revenue just means this is the sales. This is the money that is coming into your business. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a projection for every service you sell or every product you sell or clients you work with. And I'm going to give you variations of that so you have a sense of how to play with this a little bit. So let's just assume in this case for service one, maybe you're a web designer and you design websites. And generally speaking, when you're selling web design, it's $5,000. So what I wanna do first is plug in the price in this case. Okay, $5,000 is the cost for web design. And you'll see, I've got that number in here across the entire year, which means in this example, I'm not planning a price increase for the entire year. I'm gonna sell it for 5,000. Now I just need to make some assumptions about how many I'm gonna sell. So that's the next line, number goal to sell. Now, a great place to start is looking at your numbers from last year. Pull your QuickBooks reporting. Look at your client list, look and see when you were working with clients and where perhaps you sold more and where you sold less. Many of us, myself included, have some seasonality in the business. And so it's good for us to be able to plan, in this case, by month, where we think the sales will be. So that's why, let me move my face here. We've got the months across the top of the page. So we can really plan down to the month level and get a sense for where we think those sales will come. And this also helps us plan for the marketing efforts and the sales efforts that we need to put into our business every month. So what I'm gonna do for this example, a web, let's say web design, it costs $5,000. How many am I gonna sell per month? I look at my numbers from last year and I start to make some projections. I think I can sell one in January, one in February, one in March. And in this case, I don't start tell, selling two until July, August, September. And maybe that's because I'm planning a big marketing push. And I think by then I'll be able to scale it up to two per month. Cool. So this dollar goal figure is going to calculate for you anywhere that it's shaded gray or it's a color. You want to leave it alone. You're only going to fill in numbers into the white blank cells. <clears throat> now, at this point, over on the right hand side, you start to see some totals. This also auto calculates for you. So what you're seeing here is that with this forecast alone, you anticipate selling 18 of this particular service, web design at 5,000. And if you sell 18 at 5,000, it's going to be a total of $90,000 of revenue to your business. Now, 
I also have in here an option for you to use this to track actuals. You do not have to use this, but you may. Many people find that this is very helpful when they're selling multiple things to track their forecast, what they thought they'd sell, relative to what they actually sell so they can see where there are gaps across the services that they sell. So in this case, I plugged in actual sales. So this would assume that like every month I pop in here and I put in, okay, how many of these did I actually sell that month? So in this case, one in January, two in February, one in March, and you can see 22 for the whole year, which means that I made 110,000 versus the 90,000 I planned. So I'm over my forecast by $20,000 total, but you can see month by month, like this month I was over by 5,000, but this month, I was under by five and this month I was under by five this month flat to gold. So that's how one works. Now, let me give you a couple of other examples just so you can think about some potential variations for your business sometimes. And let me move my face over here now um, in this example, service number two, what I wanted to show you here is that sometimes we want to change price and you're going to go ahead and pre-plan when your pricing is going to change. So in this case, I'm assuming I start the year selling this service at 2,500, but in July, the pricing changes to 3,000 and goes that way for the rest of the year. And so you can see how that influences it. You're also seeing some scaling up in numbers. So two per month, three per month, up to four per month. And again, typically, if I see a business owner raising the quantity per month, what I want to see is that they've built a sales and marketing plan that's going to allow them to go out and get those additional sales. And then this is an example where you're seeing something a little different, flat sales every single month, 10, but raising price every single month or every quarter rather. So Q1, 500, Q3, 6, Q4, 7, Q4, Q3, 7, Q4, 8. Um, and again, it's totaling up over here. And in this instance, you'll see there's a loss for the year. Planned for 78,000 in revenue, but made 76.4. Now, what this is going to do is tally up to the bottom of the page. And so you're going to see monthly totals here. So January, February. Now, this is going to be noteworthy when you get to doing the top line financial tracker. So just know when you get into that worksheet, this is where you're going to go come grab those numbers for your revenue estimates by month. And you'll see it's tallying that up here. So let's talk about this one thing, service, product, or client. You can use this, this spreadsheet to, for any of these things. Um, if you're selling a service, and the example I gave you was like web design, this one, web design, $5,000 to do it, cool. But sometimes you're a client-based business and you have a client that's on retainer and you may want to name the client. So maybe you're a consultant or a coach and you have three clients you're working with and you want to put in the dollar amounts that they're already under contract for, cool, use it for that. But then you may map out the rest of the year using some big buckets. So you might say, I want five clients at $10,000 per month. And then you just give a bucket to those. So you can do this a little bit differently based on whatever makes sense for your own business. Of course, you can add rows. And if you do, you're gonna to need to update some formulas. What's built in here are space for 10 different services, products, or clients. But if you need to add more rows, um, you can definitely do that. Now, let's talk about expenses. That's gonna be part two of this. Expenses, you'll see the format is gonna look very similar. We've got the timeline across the top of the worksheet. So Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, and then each month. And then each of the expense categories, these are some common expense categories for business owners, but they are not by any means all of them, and they will not all pertain to you. So how do you fill this thing out? The first thing is I encourage you to get the report out of your QuickBooks or Xero or FreshBooks, whatever bookkeeping software you're using, pull the report of your expenses for the prior 12 months. And that's going to be a good baseline. And then what you're going to do is look line by line and your expenses are also vendor by vendor and decide what needs to go in here. Now I've got these chunked up into some groups, like in this case, office expenses, your business entity itself, professional fees, bank fees, website, software, etc. And for each of these, what you're going to do is then start to plug in the numbers based on actuals, if you've been running your business or an estimate of what you think it will be. 
And then for anything that's beyond historical, you're going to plug in those numbers too. So let's say, for example, let's look at team member. Maybe you go ahead and plug in your salary or what you're paying yourself. You put that here, but then you're like, hmm, this year I think I might want to hire somebody and I might want to do that later in the year. Great. Put an estimate for what you think it'll be in whatever months you think you'll hire that person. And you can always play with this. But remember, forecasts are meant to be directional. They are not meant to be precise. So you may want them to be, but what I would encourage you is, this is what my boss taught me many, many years ago working in the corporate world. He said, budgets are an art, not a science. So when you're in here, think about it's not going to be exactly perfect. Let that go. It needs to be directional. It should be a pretty good picture. It just won't be exact. So if you're finding yourself just like losing your mind, splitting hairs about trying to get it exact, exact, just let that go get it close enough. And that's good for the purpose of what you're doing here. So you'll see boatloads of categories here. Any of them that don't pertain to you, don't put a number. And then anything that does, put it in or add rows as you need to add other things in. There's also some buckets down here for customize if you need to add completely different sections that I do not have in here. Now, what you'll see is these are all tallying up by month. So you'll see here we have a total of expenses for January, February, March, all the way across for the year and a total for the year. When you get into that top line financial tracker and I say, go get your expenses for the month of January, this is where you're going to get it. And you'll take that number into that other spreadsheet. So now what's next? We've worked on the uh, revenue. We've worked on the expenses. Now we're going to work on goals. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the projection number first. And this means this is exactly what you just built. And it's the year end total or annual total for each of those sheets. So on the revenue, I'm looking for revenue projection. So I'll go to the revenue tab. I'm gonna come all the way to the bottom and look at the annual. So here that total revenue projection is 268,500. So I'm gonna come over here and type that here, already there. <clears throat> then I want the expenses number, same thing. Let's come to the bottom, all these formulas will auto calculate for you 234,520. 234, 520. The difference between revenue and expenses will be your profit number. That's going to auto calculate as well. So now what I want you to do is set three other goals. And here, what I want you to look at is what's minimally acceptable. This is typically going to be a number that's close to your projection or less than, which is saying in order for next year or this year, whatever year you're in to work, it's got to be this amount of money, at least for revenue and for expenses <clears throat> and then profit. Then what I want you to look at is what's a stretch number. Stretch typically means it's a little beyond what we think is possible, but we can get there if we really put in some extra effort into it. So go ahead and give yourself a number here. Now, what you're really looking at are these numbers and making some assumptions. So in this case, I'm saying, ah, I want to get to three. So my stretch goal is like, I'm going to go beyond 268.5, beyond the projection, and I'm going to hit stretch at 300. And maybe in order to do that, I'm going to need to spend some more money. So I anticipate spending 250, but I'd love to generate profit of 50,000. Cool. And then there's the big, hairy, audacious goal, which this is aim high, shoot high. If, if you hit the moon in the year ahead, what would that look like? And again, give yourself some numbers. So those are all three of the example tabs. And of course, there are blank ones for you to work in. So that is these here. So again, the reminder for all of these worksheets is just type in the white blank cells only. Everything else is going to auto populate for you. The only exception, and it's specific to this this particular worksheet is where it says service product or client do replace those with whatever yours is so if it was web design social media management coaching client or a client's name if they're already under retainer go ahead and type those in there so that this can be very custom to you and you'll know what's planned there and then on the expenses page again add anything you need to if it's not here add it if you need something else, change it. That's cool. All of this can be edited and you can add, of course, other categories here. And in the goals, type in these white boxes and it will auto populate the profit for you. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out. Let us know and we'll be happy to bounce back some answers. But good luck, good planning and good knowing your numbers.